Hi, this is a tutorial on how to use palettes in Beatographer. It's temporary until we can make some better videos, but we did want to have something, a, a visual reference for you to get started. So this is all about palettes. Um, you'll see here, as in the old version, we've got a default palette. Um, if you want to just get started, you can click a color and then use the draw tool to, to, to put beads on the canvas. Um, but if you want to customize and add your own colors, uh, I'll show you how to do that. Let's go to the palette, and you can see that there are, it, it shows you the number of beads of each color on the canvas at any time. So that's the only color we applied, and so that, that shows a bead count of 27. If you delete the unused beads, um, it clears everything except the beads that are on the canvas now. Um, if I want to delete that color, you can see it won't let me delete that selected swatch because uh, there are beads on the canvas. I'm going to go back, delete the beads. I use the backspace there. And now there are no beads on the canvas at that color. I'll select it and delete it. So now the palette is completely empty and I can um, add beads to it as I want. So the first way that I'll show you is to change the color of this bead and uh, you can see this is the hue bar. This, is, this changes the saturation and this changes the luminosity. So if you've got beads at home say or if you've got colors in mind that you want to play with but you don't have product numbers, um, you can just play around until you get a look that you like. So that's how to change the, the shade of it. Um, this is the finish, so that's matte, That's uh, and this is, these are all in opaque. That's a matte finish, a, a semi-gloss, and a glossy finish. This is opaque, transparent, and inside color. And so you can you can play around with the different combinations. Um, until you get the style that you want. Once you have a style that you like, um, you can add it to the palette. Uh, no dragging, you just click that, that button. Um, and you can fill the palette like that. Um, while we're looking at this, I want to show you one other thing, which is a secondary color. This toggles the secondary color slider, which is that little white dot which you can drag. And that adds a second um, sort of tint. So if you have beads that have kind of a, a, a different tint color to it, you can change the, the secondary color. And so this might help if you're trying to represent um, metallic beads, for example, um, you might get a more accurate look if you play around like that might be a, a more accurate gold look than um, than the one we had before. So that's how to add beads to the the palette with the sliders and I just want to show you if we go into the palette you can see that they've been given names by the program but they don't have product numbers and they don't have symbols uh, to go on a color chart um, this one that we gave a secondary color to has the color shown there and it's got the finish and the transparency and there are no beads on the canvas so they also say zero right now. That's fine. Now, if we wanted to make these beads, well, I'll go, let's put some beads on the canvas. This is just a demo so Let's just say, let's just say that's the pattern. We might want to rename this um, Angie's blue because my friend Angie gave it to me. Maybe this is my favorite favorite green. You can you can label these whatever you want, or you can put a you can put a product number in if you want. I don't know. What, let's just make something up. Um, so you can, you can customize the description of these as you like. You can also auto-assign symbols. So that's what would 
turn up in a word chart. Um, but these are still generic colors. They're not, um, they're not product descriptions. So if you want to match styles to these styles to actual bead products, you can click match styles to library. It says all swatch descriptions will be overwritten. That means whatever you've written here will be deleted. Unused swatches will be deleted. That means if there's anything, um, any, any colors in the palette that uh, don't have beads on the canvas, those will get deleted and it can't be undone. Yep, that's fine with me. I still want to match them. So, so now you see it's replaced my descriptions. Oh, by the way, if you want to save those, you can, you can set all that up and then go save current palette to my palettes and it will save that information. So if you, <laughs> if you want to have a backup before you match the styles then that's the way to do it. But you can see now that we've matched the styles to the library, it's assigned a bead product um, to each color and it's the closest match that the program could find to the ones we chose. Let's go back and see what it looks like. Not too bad. Um, whoops. So it says the transparency is opaque. I like it when they're all the same. Um, this one's gloss and the other two are semi-gloss. If I want to change that so that they're all semi-gloss, um, I'd click on that bead. There it is there. Open it in the bead library and these are all the closest matches to that. So I'm looking for an opaque semi-gloss one. So let's see. How about that one? Now, if I want to swap them all out, I can. if I want to just add this to the palette, I can go like that and it adds it. If I want to swap all these beads with a new color from the library, I can just go like that and now see it swaps it automatically. Um, I'm not sure I like that, so let's try a different, let's try this one. And now it, it changed. So that's how you can easily swap um, what you've got here with one's other bead products if you'd like to do that. Um, and you can see that the product number has changed as well. Um, that one, we don't have any beads, so I'm just going to delete that. So that's, that's how to use the sliders and um, a little bit about the bead library. If, I wanna, if I've got products that I want to look up and use, then I can put um, my product code in there and add it like this. You can go and add hearts to the ones that you particularly like or use often, and it's just a way to flag those colors. Um, you can't sort by your favorites, but what you can do is um, if, let's say, this is a palette that I loved and used often, then you can save the current palette and let's just call it Tuesday palette. <laughs> and now you'll see it's got four four colors in there. Um, it gives you the, the type of bead it is. I've only started putting our beads in, but um, now if you want to load one, you can just load it. If you want to delete it, you can delete it. So that's that. And now I want to show you something else. So the bead soup tool is grayed out. We can't use it because we haven't defined what beads are going to be part of that soup. So I've cleared the palette just so we can start again. Let's um, add some beads into the palette. All right, here are some just to just as an example. When I go here, um, they, they've got the generic names. That's fine. Now let's say I want to make a bead soup with the orange, the yellow, and the red. I'll click Create Bead Soup with the selected swatches. Go back to the canvas. And, ah, now look at that. The bead soup tool is available to use. So I'm going to click on it. And it shows here that the active style is, is bead soup. And that means when that's when that's highlighted, that it's gonna the computer's gonna randomly put in the colors that we've put in the soup. So the, the orange, yellow, and red. So you can 
add beads to the canvas with the draw tool. So you can see it's putting that down. You can use the rectangle tool or you can make a shape and um, now we're going to fill it with the with bead soup and there you go. So if you'd like multiple bead soups you can do that but you, you have to you have to do them one at a time. So uh, so that's the red yellow orange. Let's go back and I'll just show you you can Let's make a new one with blue and green. Create the soup. And now when we click the soup, it shows it's active. And if we use the draw tool, now it's our new soup. One more thing. This will auto assign symbols to all the styles. Sometimes if you've been playing around with beads, for example, you can switch them around. Um, now you'll see that the the order here matches the order here, and so if your if your symbols are out of order, you can either clear all the symbols and reassign them, or you can go and uh, change the order around until they match up.